All right, here with Keegan Dua of the Nashville band Wild Cub. How you doing, Keegan? <laughs> so, Keegan, you left your job in Brooklyn to pursue a musical career full time. Now, there's kind of a stigma with the whole music industry now, where it seems like parents are telling their children, "You can't make money in music anymore. It's impossible." That's like, still super true, actually. No, I mean, it, yeah, it is true. It is true. <laughs> I mean, I think that if you want, I feel like everything you need to know about the music industry is in this, uh, I think it's the New Yorker, it might be New York Magazine, uh, but there's an interview they did with Grizzly Bear that's really interesting. But they just talk about how it, the really, the last frontier of being able to make music is radio or touring, you know, so you kind of, or licensing to a certain degree, but now people are even getting slimier with licensing where they want to give you, you know, a dollar for the exposure of using your song or whatever that is so that's kind of disappearing too and uh, so it means that you either have to be resigned to spending your life as a vagabond on the road traveling nonstop to make money or you have to be on the radio and write songs that are going to be on the radio which means they have to be about three and a half minutes long and get to the point within 15 seconds and also have enough money and connections to do, make that happen you know so it's, it's a definitely a more difficult world and I, it's it's also the thing where I, I think that if fans were more aware of what it forces their bands and their artists um, into, but not artistically, but more just in terms of what the the limited means that you have to be able to continue uh, existing and making music, they might be a little bit more willing to spend the a dollar, you know, twenty nine for the song on iTunes or whatever it would be, rather than listening on on a streaming platform or something. You seem to be doing good for yourself so far. Wild Cub, already well, on the billboard busy. charts. Yeah. yeah, we're staying busy, which is really, really great, you know. But it still makes a big difference every time that fans pay for tickets and, and every time someone buys it on iTunes. I mean, I think that there's this thing that when we advertise and say, hey, buy the single on iTunes, that people think that that's money that we make, you know. When really all that, I mean, our record label doesn't even make money off of that, pretty much. What that means is every time we sell the song on iTunes, it makes it that much easier to go to a radio station and say, I know that this isn't a Katy Perry song, no offense to Katy Perry, who I like, but, you know, it's selling this many units, so please play it because there's a demand out there for it to be heard, you know. So it's, it's okay because we're busy now and it's really, really good, but we still definitely need the support of people, both in buying live tickets, but also in buying the music, you know. So before Wild Cub, you did a lot of uh, scoring for films and short films. You're even nominated for an Academy Award for your work on Innocent, I believe. Yeah, I mean, that, Innocent they won a, a, a documentary Academy Award. I just scored it, but uh, it was a, really awesome to be involved with that. I mean, in general, I do to kind of two parallel lives, or three parallel lives if you include, you know, being married and having a family. So you know, I've kind of. Uh, we'll be traveling to these shows and I'll be scoring something in the back of the van or in a hotel room so that's something it's like my time now is a lot more intensely sectioned out than it was when I was you know 18 years old or whatever where it's like I really am usually working on remixes writing new things for Wild Cup doing the live shows with Wild Cup and then being a husband and a dad and scoring movies so it's like I was joking because it's World Cup right now how much my life has changed in the four years since the last World Cup. You know, it's like the last World Cup would be like 11 a.m. and I'd be like drunk in a bar someplace with a bunch of screaming people, you know. And now I really have to battle just to keep track of what's going on, even though I love the World Cup because Wild Cup's gotten busy, film scoring stuff's gotten busy, and being a quality dad and a quality husband is also, a, you know, more than a full-time job. So it's a, it's a lot, but it's really exciting, you know. Now, does the thought process for scoring ever kind of translate into your writing rock music? I think that, it, you know, the biggest thing is your, your, the thing that's always drawn me to art in, in general is telling stories, you know, and, and trying to bring moments to life for people. And so, you know, the band, I can use drum beats, I can use repetition, I can use um, a music video, I can use lyrics, I can use volume, I can use production, all these different things to um, tell a certain type of story about emotions, you know, uh, where with film scoring, I can do as little as possible sometimes really great you know there's people like Miles Davis who have made an entire definitive art form out of doing about the things that they're not playing and when they're holding back and restraint and for me that's the exciting thing is you know Wild Cub I can keep it's big and it's kinetic and it's this thing and there's the live show and there's music videos and there's all this stuff and then film scoring I'm totally anonymous and I can literally just play a single note at the right moment and it can have huge repercussions throughout an entire film which is really exciting. 
Now, you moved from Brooklyn to Nashville, and that's where Wild Cub formed. Now, Nashville's always obviously been the city of music, but in recent years, I'd say since like maybe 2009, around then, there's sort of been this really flourishing indie rock scene. Yeah. Like, off the top of my head, I can name like Bad Cop, uh, Plastic Visions, Wild Cub. Yeah. Now, what's going on down there exactly that's leading to this kind of musical it, scene? Yeah. houses where people used to be paid full time to sit and write songs for other people you know so now that the music industry is not as profitable profitable as it used to be that has scaled itself way back and kind of become a lot more efficient in, in a specific world you know and those people will keep writing songs for you know those artists but it's also allowed the attention of people who enjoy music in Nashville to broaden a little bit and I think also there's been a lot of emigration into Nashville that's helped where you know there's been a lot of outside artists who've come and helped kind of change it and I think somewhere in the middle there's this example of people who are the exact opposite of what used to be the Nashville music scene and then there's that strong lineage of this super undeniable quality which is great a songwriting and great lyrics and great songs that can be played anywhere at any moment and will still kind of bring you to your knees that exists and somewhere that mingles in with the idea of these people who move there from wherever and don't give a shit about what the Nashville music scene is and are making music in their garage. And I think that once those two things begin to mix, it starts to create something really interesting. Interesting. So one last question. Who are you looking forward to playing with or seeing here at Firefly? Firefly? Well, it's tough because we're only here one day, so I have to be very, very choosy. Um, but, gosh, that's a really good question. Um, for us, like, I, this sounds like a non-answer, but for me, it's like you get to see all the people who you know from all the different bands. And it's like, especially because everybody's so spread out and everybody's traveling all summer that for us, like, we just got to see Dante from City and Color, and he has his own band now called Spanish Gold. And just being able to, like, catch up with him for five minutes back in the artist area and be like, hey, man, how's it going? And, like, actually kind of see people. And just even in the media, tent, getting to see people that we run into or do interviews with and that you make friends with, that's really kind of the exciting thing for us. And then in terms of the schedule, I don't know. I'll have to look and pick two people. We've pulled in. We do nonstop press. We play. And then I usually have a cocktail, and then I'll go and enjoy. So at that point, I'll, I could answer. I'll email you later and tell you. <laughs>